Hey, good afternoon everybody and welcome back to the channel. Just got this WZRELB 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. And this is what I'm going to pair up to that Chin's LifePo 4 battery. That if you've watched some of my earlier videos, you can see that I've been upgrading my system and I needed to boost up uh, to a larger inverter and after researching all kinds of inverters uh, I settled in on this one it has a lot of reviews over the past few years it's moderately priced uh, widely available on Amazon and has pretty good reviews in the real world so I'm hoping I'll get the same experience so this is it this is the 12 volt 3000 watt it has a uh, 6000 watt surge capability which i don't think i'll ever be pushing it up to that level but it should cover everything i need uh, with that surge capability i'm not going to be running anything over 3000 watts so i i will be able to be covered for my usage with with this size of an inverter just fine so a few of the reasons that i uh, chose this one over uh, some of the other ones I was looking at, uh, I really wanted to have a hardwire capability, which this has. Here on the front, you can see uh, this is voltage in indicator, uh, voltage output on the AC side. Uh, you've got a couple of AC terminals here for plug in. And then it has this hardwire capability, and I really wanted that so I can tie in a, a refrigerator to this thing. Uh, that's the, the thing that I'm going to be using that will have the biggest draw on it. So I wanted to be able to hardwire that in. So, And the other thing that I really liked about this was it had a, a 0.8 amps or 8 tenths of an amp uh, draw on its idle power, where a lot of the other inverters I was looking at had two to three amp draw in idle mode and I didn't want to be drawing that much power just in idle so this has a very low idle mode usage which is uh, something I've always tried to aim for of course the on off switch on on lights up here and uh, uh, voltage warning display if you ever hit that uh, and then in the back, this thing weighs a hefty 11 and a half pounds. In the back, of course, you got your positive and negative uh, terminals. Nice heavy duty, very stout. A couple of fans here. So yeah, this is a... This is about to be hooked up here, lickety split. I'm waiting on one particular cable I need to tie this into the rest of the system. And then we're going to fire it up. <clears throat> so, besides the inverter, it came with uh, four cables. Two positive, two negative. They're 10 millimeter or 7 aug each. If you watch some of the other reviews on this model, you'll see that they're they're using uh, two bundled like that onto each terminal, you know, from inverter to battery. That's what they're using. It. They're using two. I'm not going to use these for that purpose. I, I can use them for uh, part of my application, but I'm going to be tying one aug cables from my battery to this thing. It also came with um, eight 40 amp fuses and then it came with a little teeny uh, plate to cover your uh, hard wire. Once you're hardwired in it's got a little protection plate to snap in place to keep those uh, protected. And I just dropped it, so I'll pick that back up. <laughs> so anyway, it just snaps into place there. Keeps it nicely 
covered from anything coming into contact with it. So that's what it came with. So you can get a, a remote control for these. I didn't get one with a remote control. I went with as cheap of a model as I could get with these uh, at this specification of 3000 watts. Uh, it supposedly has an 85 to 90 percent efficiency. Uh, so I'm going to hope more for the 90 percent, but we'll see over time how that does. But that sounds pretty good, too. Um, let's see if there's anything else I forgot to mention about this before I'm going to show you what it's going to look like, how I plan on tying it in. Okay. So I'm going to show you that here next. Okay, I'm back. I got the uh, what I want to show you hooked up because the reason I'm doing it like this on this particular video is because I've got a couple of questions and I've been getting some really good feedback from a lot of people that know a lot more about this than I do. And I want to ask a couple of specific questions. So I'm going to turn the camera here and show you, see if I can fit it all in. And then explain what I've got here. So this will be the coming off the battery to a 200 amp fuse right here to the inverter. And these are the, I'm waiting on some cables. I'm just using these smaller cables for demonstration on my flow. Uh, so from uh, the inverter side here to a a bus bar here and then of course negative battery and this is that Eile or Ailey uh, battery monitor that's going to be installed and I'll put that in between uh, coming off the battery be the first thing it hooks into and then it's going to go from the battery negative side to the power negative side uh, to a bus bar here and then to the uh, inverter. So uh, this is this is how I plan on hooking it up. One of the questions I have after watching a lot of various reviews on similar systems, I see the uh, the charge controller uh, being tied in to the bus bars. So your negative here and the positive to here coming out of your solar charge controller, uh, and and then I see some people uh, tying it directly into the battery like I have mine tied right now. Mine come out of the charge controller directly onto the battery. Now with those Chins batteries, you don't have a lot of thread to play with for bolting on a lot of stuff. Uh, there would be enough to keep the charge controller uh, tied into the battery directly. So my question is, is there any real advantage uh, to bringing your charge controller off into the bus bars into your system as opposed to being directly in the battery? I don't know the answer to that question, so that's one of the reasons I wanted to get this video out uh, before I hook this up in the next uh, day or so. I should get my cables within about a day, so I'm getting real close to tying this whole thing up and firing it up and seeing how it does. But that I'm not real clear of. And then here's the uh, battery monitor, and there's just a 14-gauge a, a wire that I'm going to use. It doesn't come with this to tie the, uh, the shunt into the display reading. And then I'll pull the positive 14-gauge. There's a little outlet on this side, and tie that right on over to uh, this side of the fuse. So... That's what I'm looking at doing. I hope that was pretty explainable. I think that's going to work just right. And like I said, the only thing I'm not sure on doing is where to stick those uh, leads from the charge controller. I, I'm sure it'd be fine just to leave them on the battery the way they are. Or if I can get my finger, should I go ahead and, and use you know the, the bus bar connections? I really don't know which one would be more, if one is more efficient than the other. 
Uh, I've seen it done both ways, uh, but without an explanation as to why. So that's it. Uh, I'm real close to uh, having a lot more power available. This will be fired up here pretty quick. With that. All right. Thanks again for everyone who has helped me along in these projects. I really do appreciate the advice. I'm learning as I go, having fun. And I thank all of you for your support. And thanks for subscribing, everybody. All right. I'll catch you on the next one when we fire it up. Aloha.